I'd like to bring the uh, select board meeting of the Guildford Select Board to order and recognize the public, Max and Miles, Miles and Miss Sheila Morris. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, rules of procedure, I think that we can skip. They're on the table if anybody is interested in them. The rules of procedure govern how the public and the select board interact. Are there additions to... Yes, I have one which are on all of your agenda. Uh, the errors and omissions from the uh, assessor clerk. Um, the reason it's late is because it needs to be submitted to the state this week. Okay. I'm not sure what asks you what you mean by that. We will get to that. It, it's under the end of new business. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes? I have an amendment. Oh, it was already we, taken care of. We've taken care of it. Thank you. Any others? Do I hear a motion then to accept the minutes? I'll motion to accept the minutes. Is there a second? All, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Um, please sign the minutes. I also have the corrected minutes that you approved last week but did not sign, so you could sign both of them, please. Thank you, Peter. They, they looked good, the amended minutes. Well, here you can and do we have a, a, the next item on the agenda is the highway update. Is there a general update? I don't yeah. see Danny here. He's not, but I did speak with him this afternoon around 2.30. Um, they have been doing a lot of culvert work. Uh, which Gordon is very well aware of. Uh, we replaced all the culverts except for one over on Collier Road um, and have done a few on a couple other roads. They've also been doing a little bit of grading, not as much as Danny hoped because it's been so dry and uh, doing a bit of equipment repairs. Unfortunately, as Dan told you about last week, uh, the uh, mower has some issues and he took the tractors down to Greenfield. Unfortunately, they're going to have to basically disassemble the entire thing to get to the part that broke. Um, they have to remove the cab and then they have to take the tractor up into two halves to get to the piece. Uh, he was supposed to get an estimate on the work today. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it was not, he didn't hear from the uh, service manager. Um, when he spoke to them on Friday, they're estimating probably upwards of 15000 um, Unfortunately, it ran out of warranty in May. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That being said, Dan highly doubts that any of it would have been covered under warranty. Yet. So he's a little frustrated, but they need the machine, so it's down there getting work on it. They estimate it's going to probably take three weeks to repair. And it cost us that? About 15000 Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So that's pretty much what they've been doing. Uh, is there any update on the purchase of the new truck? Uh, yes, uh, it's <laughs> in the warrant. It's, <laughs> it's, it's definitely reflected in your warrant. I bet it is. Uh, and so it's been bought. It has, um, and, seems, and the guys seem very happy about it. I think it's gonna be a, a very worthwhile addition to their fleet. And Dan and Pete are going to go it up on Thursday. Thank you. That's it. Okay, then the Carpenter Hill Carpenter Project update. Yes, so we have some very positive news that the project is finally moving forward. We received our stream alteration permit last week. Uh, we had initially, at the, on last Monday, we received uh, a verbal approval to at least begin work on the upper of the two culverts. And by Thursday, the state had received all the remaining plans that were outstanding from um, the engineers. And Scott was very gracious and made time to approve it because he knew of the impending October 1st deadline. Um, so tomorrow morning, uh, Dan and myself and Scott will be meeting with the contractor on the site to do the pre-construction walkthrough. Uh, to make sure that he understands what the state is expecting and what Dan is expecting of him. Um, and he hopes to potentially have crews start excavating the upper culvert tomorrow afternoon. Wow. So just for residents to note, uh, 
Dan has the road closed to through traffic from September 24th through October 24th at wow. this time. Wow. So residents who live on the road will be able to access their homes. You may have to drive around uh, the other side through uh, Hinesburg Road to get to your house, but it will be open if you live there. Uh, what were the dates again? September 24th through October 24th. Is that when the project is finished or is that? Yeah. Yes. So everyone's very happy. Yes, that's, that's great. great news. Thank you. Okay, the next item on the agenda, uh, we have Ms. Merce Morse reporting on emergency management. Would you come to the, to come the join table, us. Ms. Morse? Yes, thank you. Ms. Morse. Thank you. Nice to see you here. It's nice to see you, Sheila. Thank you, everybody. Lost. I know you're here. Yeah. <laughs> so, wrong end of the other end of the table. I was going to say you're at the wrong end of the table, though. So I, um, I'm here to talk about the emergency management director position. And I don't know what was shared with the um, select board this weekend, but um, uh, so I would like to divest myself of that co-emergency management director role. Um, I've played a pretty active role the whole entire time I was on the select board. Um, and the person who we had um, appointed <coughs> a few years ago as the emergency management director has been largely absent, basically. Um, and so <clears throat> I um, think that this town needs somebody who is trained and certified, um, present, and ideally not a first responder. So um, I um, have done some training. As, as I want to remind the select board that you all need to have your cer basic certificates and Peter needs to see them and that's for you particularly to know about. Um, but um, I'm not in a position to be able to do this any longer. And um, I had a discussion with Peter who had a discussion with Rich Cogliano who is our regional emergency coordinator. Um, and Peter meets all three of those criteria. So he is he is trained and certified, more trained and more certificates than I, and he's been to the last two emergency management director um, conferences, the annual, um, that I haven't been to. Um, and he is uh, he has, he's present. He knows the systems. He knows what's going on. He knows the people. Um, <clears throat> I would like to recommend that um, Peter be appointed emergency management director. That is um, something that um, Peter advised me that Rich has said more and more towns are appointing their town managers, emergency management directors. Um, and I'm est I estimate somewhere between maybe five up to eight hours a month of time. And if you figure um, 26 hours, $26 an hour, that would be somewhere between 130 and 208 dollars a month, maximum, I think, um, and then or 1,560 to 2,500 dollars a year. Um, so, I um, that's the salary. That's the, the I think is I it think called a salary. It's a it's a, a rich stipend. stipend. I think it's yeah. a stipend. And I think that um, Peter has a pretty. So Peter and I talked about this, I don't remember if it was last week or the week before, um, and I had sort of asked him if he could tease apart his job description mm -hmm. so that um, the select board could take a look at what he absolutely has to do, what might be handed off to somebody else, and what he would, and how, what, how he would make room to add um, 10 or so, no more than I would say. I mean, I don't think I've ever spent 10 hours a month on this, but. Are, are you taking, can we ask you questions now, or would you like to finish? Can I just finish my yeah. summary here? And then, yeah. Um, so I lost my track. Um, oh, so I asked Peter to revise the job description or pull it out so you all could review it, and that needs to be done still. Um, and um, I think, so I'm recommending that his job, he be appointed, his job description be re revised, and that the board consider adding to the emergency management um, budget line, <coughs> budget in for fiscal year 2021, up to $2,500 of actual work time <coughs> logged, not just a, a 
a certain sum per month, but just tracking hours for emergency management. Um, yeah, so now that would mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, can the board assume that your recommendation comprehends the, that knowing Peter and having worked with Peter for three years, that, that this can be done and without diminishing Peter's work for the town? Is um, that your judgment? I, that, is my, um, that is my hope. Um, but I think you need to consider carefully his job description. Um, I think that there are things that Peter does. So we, so in the last year or two, we've added um, uh, management of websites and Facebook pages and front porch forum and things like that that are not reflected in accurately in the job description. Um, he's done more emergency training. He's probably doing more financial stuff than um, has been acknowledged in the um, job description. So it's relatively close to your three, four, 15 year review, um, November 15th, right? <laughs> so it's a good time to look at the job description. It's good a good point. time to assess what can be done um, if there are things that can be passed off to somebody else in some other way. Um, Peter and I discussed a little bit about what might happen and how he can integrate a few hours a month of emergency management services. Clearly, if there's an emergency, that number would skyrocket. There's been one emergency since I was named emergency management director, and that was on Melinda Hill. <laughs> so I just went down to the bottom of the hill and stood in the cold for a few hours. Um, you know, I don't know, but there's a there is also a, um, statewide training that you all know about on October 24th. I will not be here for that. So Peter, even if he is emergency management director, knows way more than he should. <laughs> but um, he'll be able to, to fill in. Um, and will your co-director be there on October 24th? I never hear from that person. I don't know. And Rich is not her. I think we've got to make a, yeah. a change. Yeah. Okay. May so, I add a couple points? And I will just say one other thing, which is I'm willing to help again. You know, it's just that I can't do it. <clears throat> Sorry. OK. So I'm just going to, a couple things. Uh, I would concur with Sheila's assessment. I do think now is a really good time, just based on my three years here, to, to kind of adjust the my job description for the work that I do. Um, so I think that's a good fit. I do agree with her. I think that I can fit it in. I think there's a, a, some smaller things that I do that I think would be better off passed on to someone else. And we have. Uh, not that this conversation has not been had with Penny yet, but we have a uh, young person who was recently hired for the town that, that um, might potentially uh, be open to doing some of those things. Um, you know, obviously that would come from the select board budget and not from the, the treasurer's budget. But um, also to her point of uh, estimating the the cost, the financial cost of the town. Uh, at the conference I went to, one of the things I did talk about is the average stipend right now in the state is $5,000. So you actually be saving yourself some money if this were the case. Um, and in the event of emergency, I would already be present. And because of my daily well, job, I Well, not necessarily. At night. Hopefully uh, you'd be able to be present. I would be present. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, we talked. that was one of the things that we... Yeah. I, well, he's pretty that, far away. Yeah, that's a but, deficit in, in, yeah. in this. It, you don't live in town. That is true. Um, although Richard did um, say that, that as far as the state is concerned, that's not a problem um, from their eyes. And he said it's that way in many towns where somebody is involved in municipal government in one way but happens to live in a town or two over. Mm -hmm. So he didn't personally have. But that wasn't an end. And, and no, not for him. Yeah. Good. And so it does, okay, oh, wait. it does seem that we could designate somebody within the town to get the, start the process, uh, start the process yep. uh, for nighttime emergencies or Friday emergencies. Sure. And we might want to start, a, a, I mean, we should start a search for a co-director, it seems like, or at least have a talk with the present co-director and to see whether we can find a co-director who lives in Guilford, which I think would be the ideal situation. I think, at least my personal opinion, I think that potentially coordinating with either the 
uh, fire chief or assistant fire chief, mm -hmm. I think, right. might fit that role mm -hmm. instead of having, I'm not opposed to having a co-director, that's up to you. Uh, I had no issue with that, but I, it might be a fit mm -hmm. to work something out with them instead, since the EOC is based in their building and you know they will get called for 99.9% right. of emergencies in the town. They both have my contact information. They know how to reach me, and they have reached me on the weekends and without a problem. I, I just want to say that, that to me personally, the threat of an emergency is much more real than it ever has been. Even in a small town in Vermont, I, I can see it happening. Uh, whereas uh, several years ago, it would be Guilford having an, 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 an emergency, a major emergency. But I think that what we see in our country and around the world today has to make us all very acutely aware of the fact that it can happen here. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so we need to be aware of that. And this is a very serious, very profound issue about who, how we deal with emergency management in the town. So you all have in the fire department an amazing group of yes. volunteers. Yes. Um, I know that Mike and Jared and bunches of different people have been trying to figure out who might take this role on, and I think they were talking with Peter and agreed that he would be a good resource. Um, the one thing that I said to Peter was that um, if he ever decides to leave Guilford, <laughs> He's right. going to take a lot. He's got a lot of eggs in his basket. Uh, <laughs> and, I, and I'm remembering that the emergency management director is not the incident commander of an no. incident. No, that right. is our right. fire chief. That is the fire chief. Yeah. So um, the other thing that uh, Richard noted is that uh, he was strongly encouraging of me to complete the. I, I mentioned to you folks two weeks ago about the um, emergency management director certification program that the state created mm -hmm. this year, and he was very encouraging that I complete that because I'm already a third of the way through after this exercise in October I will be a third of the way through the requirements um, for that certification and um, of the ones that I have remaining only one of them is in person and the rest are all online so Good. I also spoke with this will be part of a later conversation but I also spoke with Alyssa Sabeto in at WRC and she was very excited to hear that if Sheila's no longer going to be in the role that you would consider putting me in there. I just, she wanted me to pass that on to you today. A couple of questions. Um, so let's say there was a, for, for you, I guess, um, if there was a significant emergency, um, just wondering your thoughts on how the, your town administrator position would be, you know, continue to function while you're in full on emergency mode. It would really depend on the emergency. Were you going to say something? Yeah, the only thing I want to add is is that we we did a uh, a Vigilant full phase guard exercise, which was was you know a audition for a major emergency, and it was just as we were transitioning into the EOC as far as having someone in the role of the director. Um, I can tell you from that experience as being a part of it from the select board. The individual that shined in this whole thing was our town administrator, who was not in the role to be in that role. But what I'm getting to, to answer part of your question, Mike, is that the role of the town administrator is multifaceted in an emergency. That the, the, the town administrator helps facilitate what the select board needs to get done decision-wise during an emergency, because the select board's very much a part of that from a decision-making standpoint. Having the EOC director, you know, supporting what's going on in the EOC with knowledge of what, you know, and, and how to interact and engage with the select board, to me, it's, it's, you know, it makes a lot of sense. So there are a lot of things that Peter would do as the emergency management director that o would overlap with making decisions as his role as the town administrator, from what I saw. I don't know whether I think, you'd... Uh, I mean, the town administrator would help the select board decide if it's, you have to declare an emergency. That's number one. Once you declare an emergency, he becomes the emergency management director. And then you, when you step back and you authorize funds to, for work to, to be done or something like that, that's again a select board role that the town administrator would help. But he would know what needs to be done. So it's a, it's, it's, a, it's really, and, it's and that's what I realized watching 
you know, our old town administrator just functioned seamlessly in that role is that it, it has, it almost, to me, it's a better fit this way because there's a total understanding of the role as well as the legalities around, you know, the decision making. And the other thing, if, if it were two separate positions, the EMD would make a recommendation to me who would then bring it to the select board and I would just have my own little internal conversation and then <laughs> contact you all. <laughs> and also remember what Richard just pro brought up about the incident commander or director or whatever incident it is, is the, uh, the fire chief. So there are different pieces, uh, different people managing different pieces. He wouldn't have to be out there with a shovel at the same time that he's commanding the office. Can we the other, have the other thing is, Did yes. you have another question, Michael? One, I have one other. Okay. And then once Directly. the select board does, for example, approve an expenditure, then that would be, fall upon my role as town administrator, and then I would have to inform the treasurer, the treasurer and then the EMD that it was approved. So it, it cut a lot of steps out of the process. Uh, and I think, like Gord said, it will smooth, smooth it out. Okay. And uh, my other question is, um, if we, I mean, let's say, you know, this position, that it takes up five to eight hours of your time a week, and, and we're talking about a month. month. A month. Oh, a month. Yes. Oh, yeah. Just a not month. A, not yeah. A oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. No, I'm s No. Yeah. All right. Fair it's enough. maybe one, one and a half hours a week. It's, it's going to be front loaded in October because yeah. we have a really good list of volunteers, but somebody needs to contact them and say, just show up. Don't do anything, just mm -hmm. show up and then leave, you know, or s call in or something like that. So that's going to take a little while to coordinate, but um, that's for this exercise in October. And can I ask, I know with the, the grant budgeting process, what is our, because it's no longer, I believe, what is our current stipend for the position? We don't have We, don't have we have one. talked we about having one for some time right. and talked about putting it in the budget, but the town does not have a stipend. So the town does not have so a So you've been no. volunteering. I, oh, yes. yeah. That's <laughs> Yeah. It used to be a paid position. Yeah, that but was that's what we had for Mont Yankee. She said the site thing was 2500 No, I said, so I, I'm recommending, recommending. that, uh, that yes. okay. for those hours, mm -hmm. which he'd be paid at his regular rate, right. hourly rate, and that he record actual hours. Would you like me to repeat that? VY um, is the one who used to Recommendations for a motion? Mm. Um, I think that this is a two-step process. I, I think that we need to um, review the, the job description before we, we, we make an appointment. And I would like a subcommittee to do that. I don't think you have time. The, the only issue is that then we won't have anyone running it. I mean, you'll have so, Peter in lieu of me in right, October. Right. Um, well, it's I, she's uh, stepping down effective today. That without appointing someone tonight, it, that role automatically falls upon the select board. Tep chair. No, it's the select board as a whole. You, you can tell tricked me. <laughs> <laughs> you once <Hi>. tricked me. <laughs> oh my God! I thought it was the chair this whole it's, time. It's, it was. Uh, Richard said it changed about two years ago. Nobody told uh, me. No, he said most towns still think it falls immediately on the chair. He said and it falls on the entire select okay. board. My, my uh, recommendation was that, it, that you immediately yeah. review the job description and see what can be allocated out, but I think it's pretty... Personally, I feel we got to just figure out what to allocate out so that we can make this work for Peter. So, but, but are you I think I'm that suggesting we, I, we I move tonight? that we decide or move on the fact that we're going to make Peter the EMC and uh, whatever it is, he, he and and director. Is uh, that a motion? That's a motion. Okay, to make is there a second? Argument. Can I just sure? I think you should move that you, to appoint Peter as EMD following immediately following job description review and paying for the actual hours. I would actually make it a little more So there's a contingent. Yes. That's yeah. good. I like yes, that. Yes, that's good. Yeah. We'll, okay. we'll Can we need to rewrite the down? job description of the person who would absorb the, you know, former You have to have that discussion that in the town office. Right. Well, yeah, we're going to have to talk about mm -hmm. that role, but it's not necessarily, that's not, that might not even be feasible, depending on 
That's another challenge. That's a, that's well, a Peter, can you read me the uh, uh, read us the uh, motion as you're writing it? Yeah, just one second. Thanks. But I equally agree that we need to uh, get into his job description. And I would and like to have a subcommittee. Uh, uh, and and, and I would people. be a part of that subcommittee. My only issue is I am kind of not around for about two weeks. So as long as it's away. If, well, or if you can, as long as there's only one other select board member as part of that, we can have discussion via email or telephone. True. Um, because we would not be in violation of open meeting law. And then one of the members from that committee then reported back to the select board as a whole, we would be in compliance with Yeah, we law. could do that. You could also, okay. I, you willing to? I know a whole lot about the job descriptions. Huh. Is she? So yeah, and I'm go. perfectly willing to. I'm, I Are actually started to working to on this before that I got into the select board. I was helping write the job description for would this position. Would you like to be on the committee? I would love to help. That'd be okay. very helpful. What I have is, is the motion at the moment is Gordon moved to appoint Peter as EMD effective immediately following the review of the town administrative job description. And oh. I didn't catch. No, there was something uh, else there too. Uh, the about portion the of the stipend. stipend. I, I always worked. Um, it <laughs> is immediately revising the job description, not followed immediately, but appoint Peter as EMD no. immediately revised the job description Correct. and the position to be paid for um, at the regular hourly rate of actual hours worked. That's not exactly the right wording, but close. Is there a second? I will second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. Can we discuss the subcommittee at this point? Um, uh, who if Sue Sheeler is going to be on that committee? I'll help you. And, you and I will. I okay. will use it Does someone else want to be on Pardon that me? committee? I did. Yes, I did. I'll, I would like to be on that committee too. So. Good. Okay. Uh, so who's on the committee? Sheila, Richard, Richard and Gordon. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Sheila. It's a pleasure to see you. Me too. You going to stay? I get a marshmallow there? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's. Miles are off. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, on to the, uh, and we can, um, who would like to be the coordinator of that committee, that, so that, to call the committee to order? Peter and I already started it. Would you like right. me to? Why don't you include us? <laughs> 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 Sheila's going to drive. I'll, I'll, stick, I'll, I'll get working on this this week. Yeah. Good. Uh, but it, it is a committee, and we all want to be involved in the discussion. Uh, next, the draft audit update. Peter, you have an update on that? Well, not necessarily an update. I shared the draft audit with all of you mm -hmm. over the weekend uh, for your review. I'm oh, not sure pages. how many of you uh, reviewed it in its entirety. Uh. Um, I did read the entire thing myself as part of my job and uh, compared it to our financials. And um, unlike last year, I did not notice any specific errors sure. in it, either financial or grammatical. Uh, which is um, something that they still, a year later, feel guilty about. Um, so is, if you are uh, approve of the audit, then I need a motion and I need, actually technically two motions, I need one to approve the audit, the draft audit, and then a second motion to approve your chair to sign on behalf of all of you the approval of the financial statements and reports. Do I have a motion to approve the draft audit? But you may want to see if there's questions about the audit first. Well, we can ask them after you make a motion. Yeah. Sure. Okay, is there a second? I will second. Okay, all those in favor? Can we talk about it first? Yeah, let's oh, talk first. Let's discussion, okay, yeah. yeah. So, Peter, quickly, and again, I didn't look at this in, with as much time as I would like. But we're in a very positive position. Yes. Do you not agree? Why are we in such a positive position? We are a couple of reasons, I believe. Uh, one, I think, is because of the uh, oversight of the select board. I think that you guys, the fact that you guys actually look at the budget status report nearly every meeting, whether it's on the weekend and the right. one I, I give to you or before the meeting starts, um, and actually per the workshop I was at, yeah. that does not happen very often in towns in Vermont. Uh -huh. So the fact that you guys are looking at specific budget items and when you okay. see that one is you know 15% over budget, even though that's not a huge amount, you're questioning it and we find a reason why. So I think that's one reason. I also think that um, both Danny and then 
uh, those of us, basically Danny, Penny, and myself, who have the spending authority, um, keep a very close eye on what we're doing. And the amounts that are being spent, Danny and I look at that for the highway department on a regular basis. I look at it for the town on a regular basis. And if I see an invoice that comes through that doesn't seem right, I'll talk to somebody else in the office to figure out what's going on. Right. And I think it's that we have this vigilant eye. It's not just a monthly thing we're doing. We're doing this every week when we get new voices coming in. And so I think that... I was um, here witnessing one of those when we were having our yep. discussion. Exactly. But I think it's really important for the town to understand that because a lot of effort goes into the part of the budgets that we control. Yep. The select board, as well as the town controls. We can't control our school budget, unfortunately. And, and I think but, the, the third thing to answer your question, I think, um, goes into the season that we're, we're coming upon starting in October is our budget planning process. And it starts with me going through every single line item one by one, looking at what was spent, why it was spent, was that worth our funds for that point, and then talking to each of you about it. And then we find the areas that maybe were overspent, figure out why. If it was justified, then we need to increase it for the, the following year. And if we had an excess in that account, well, then we decrease it. Right. And, and I think it's just that close attention that's paid by everyone involved. And it's fairly well known throughout the state that Guilford's in a really good financial place and it has been for a while. And we have two new select board members who will be joining that granular process <laughs> for the fall and into the winter. And also, Sheila, re, as you recall, has offered to Help stay to on as our advisor. Mm -hmm. I do have a question. So, Gordon, you said that um, the town is in a very good financial position. And what does that mean? Do you want to? That's actually that going to be transfers out to other. Yes, that's actually the next order of business. Okay. Is it leads have, into that, but yes. I just I felt it's really important yeah. to, and so we'll talk about the specific numbers. Yep. So we have a budget surplus for uh, this year. Yes, and uh, as we were talking about, you know, that fall uh, budget process, our budget meetings are open to the public. So if oh, there wow. are members of the public who would like to come to our 7 a.m. or 4 p.m. <laughs> meetings to discuss our budget, you know, they're welcome. So we have a motion on the floor. It's been seconded. Is there any first? Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. This is the draft. It was draft as it presented to you, so you are approving the mm -hmm. audit now. Okay. This Right, we all know that then. Good, thank you. Yeah. Now you need a second time. motion, please, to authorize, because there's only room for one holy signature. Do I have an op a, a motion to have the, the select chair? Have yeah, Richard. I have the sign. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So Can we sign this. Um, there's two copies for you to sign on top. And then there's a further document in the back for me to sign that I witnessed you signing it. Okay. Uh, and we can move on uh, as I'm signing this to errors, a surplus transfer, which is the next order on the agenda, the next item on the I'm agenda. sorry, uh, who seconded that? Michael. Thank you. Okay, so uh, as we generally do every year, we have a few uh, journal entries that need to happen as a result of the audit. Uh, and again, in my, this is my third year here, and this is the fewest we have had in my three years here. Um, and two of them, we have a total of eight this year. And of those eight, two of them are to report a surplus transfer. Uh, the first uh, surplus transfer is <clears throat> for the general fund. It's a surplus of $142,701.60. And the second transfer is for the highway department, and that is a surplus of $174,447.18. Um, so explain to me quickly where the where they're transferring to from from sure. to so for the general fund, 
Um, I don't remember how many years ago it was, but 12 years ago, I believe, the town created, uh, the town being, the select, the select board recommended to the residents to create a, a reserve fund. And the residents uh, voted on and the, and it. And town to meeting day, the residents voted to approve this. And what happens is, should there be any surplus, or there's a few other funds that might get transferred in there, um, those funds are then available to the select board to use at their discretion in the best interest of the town without having to go back to voters to do so. Oh, wow. So, for example, <coughs> we use those funds to, or the select board use those funds to do the renovations of this building. And one of, so with that fund, certain stipulations were set up with it. And one of those is that um, it needs to be maintained at a minimum of 5% uh, of the combined budgets of the um, general fund and the highway fund, and it cannot exceed 20%. So when, if it does exceed, then the select board is mandated to spend it down. Move it out somewhere into mm -hmm. a project or something. Correct. Exactly. Um, and if it, it diminishes below that 5%, then in the upcoming uh, budget process, you are required to fund it up to that 5%. Mm -hmm. um, with this, this surplus, we're going to be going over the maximum. So this is from the general fund to the reserve fund. That's correct. The highway now, the highway fund is slightly different. So oh. the highway fund is actually um, set in place by law, and those funds can only be used for highway purposes. I see. Where the general one can be used for whatever. If the select board so decided that the funds from the general fund, um, you needed to you know, buy a new piece of equipment for the highway department, you could do that. But um, the highway funds are what are called restricted funds mm -hmm. and are, can only be used for that purpose. Mm -hmm. And if it comes out of a specific, if those uh, surplus in the highway fund comes out of a specific uh, uh, line item, for example, for repaving, that those funds can then only be used for repaving. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Uh, so are they transferred out of the highway fund to someplace else, or they stay in the transfer? Uh, the highway have, fund. Uh, we have a highway reserve fund. Highway as well. reserve fund. Okay, um, so which, which is different from the highway fund to the highway reserve fund. Mm -hmm. So the working highway fund is the 009, which you have a copy of mm -hmm. right here, and then the highway reserve fund is 010. I see. Okay. Do we need a, mo a motion for this? Do. You do. You yes. definitely need a motion okay. for both of these. You can include it, uh, make it all as one motion to uh, uh, transfer both of them. So I'll, the, I'll make a motion okay. to transfer the surplus in uh, both the general fund and the highway fund as uh, stated here. Do you want me to give you the numbers? Um, I will put them in. Okay. okay. Do I have a any second? Sure. Second. Any, okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. The motion is carried unanimously. Errors and omissions. One moment, please. Mm -hmm. We're waiting. Okay. okay. So, uh, Lisa approached me. Um, Lisa approached me this morning requesting me to add, so when the listers or assessor clerk um, work on the grand list, inevitably there will be an error or an omission um, due to any number of various factors. In this instance, the uh, owners of the Tontine building <coughs> had not responded to numerous requests from Lisa to provide her with uh, updated financial data on the value of the building and so she put in her assessed value uh, and they came back to her and uh, said no we disagree with that and she explained to them the whole situation and said well I need accurate financial data to support a reduction and they finally submitted it to her uh, actually she had someone in the office today from the state assessor's office that was working here with her on a couple of things. So he actually helped re review it with her and he thought she did it correctly. And so she is uh, recommending to the select board to uh, uh, change the real value of the Tontine and Canal Limited Partnership Building 
and decrease it from $384,500 to $246,900. This is a difference of $137,600. Um, basically, uh, I mean, you as a select board could technically dispute it if you wanted to, but it's because they submitted the financial data to support their mm -hmm. uh, Do we argument. need to officially approve that? You do need a motion so and I'll, I need to I'll move to approve uh, Lisa's to recommendation to make the adjustment on this property. Do I have a second? Sure. Yes. Thank you. Any discussion? So I, was that the only error? There's only one approach? this year. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Is that oh, an apartment thing? Yes, that's correct. That's yeah. on the corner of uh, Five and Weatherhead Hollow Road. I mean, Guilford Center Road. Uh, Across the street from the general It's store. the yellow building. Oh. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very okay, much. The so motion is carried. Thank you, folks. Uh, now, there, unfortunately, the state still thinks that most towns have only have three select board members. So if you folks could <laughs> give me your signature, and, I, and two of you will have to just squeeze it that's in on the fine. sign. We can handle uh, it. Please. Thank you. <laughs> Over We're very capable. here? No, nope, that's, for the, that's a lister. So spot. select board is here. I can write very small. Um, and just, I think you folks can handle it. Okay, the next item on our agenda is... Uh, and I've been waiting breathlessly for this. <laughs> <laughs> I report on the broadband access meeting that we are really interested in. And we're so glad that you both went uh, as representative of the Guildford Center Report. So we really appreciate that and we thank you. Let's hear what happened. Uh, uh, do you want to talk, Michael? I'm glad to start. Uh, your summary was excellent. So um, okay. why don't you uh, well, start? Well, let's just, all right, I'll start it. So um, there's also, we all got a, an email from, uh, I don't remember her name, but we got an email that you could actually watch the entire meeting if you wanted to. And so you, you can you can get that if, uh, no matter what we say. So um, uh, th this was an exploratory meeting. It was uh, hosted by the Democratic uh, um, legislators, the delegation, a uh, Wyndham County delegation. And it was, um, there were lots of people there from lots of different towns across Wyndham County, which was very interesting, mm -hmm. all, all the way from, uh, uh, you know, there were folks from uh, Rockingham and, and all, over, just everywhere, Londonderry, they were all over. And um, it, it was an informational meeting to learn about what is a CUD, a communications union district, and how they might work, and what are some options for going forward. And I think the big thing to note right now is that um, there are three of these uh, union districts currently working in the state of Vermont. So there are three models already in the state of Vermont for these co communication union districts. All three developed differently and all three are currently functioning differently. So there's a lot of latitude in the way this whole process can work. The other thing to note is that there's coming to be soon uh, money available for the establishment, the development of these union districts uh, that weren't available, uh, that the, these monies were not available prior. Does that seem right? I think mm -hmm. So it's a new, it's kind of new and and it went into uh, effect July first. July first. Okay, thank you. And um, there there's already uh, there's already a fair amount of chomping at the bit from other towns. They're ready to go uh, and be and, and the point here is just to be part of a. Uh, we have an opportunity here to be part of a learning community essentially uh, no, no we're not making any commitments we're not making any uh, we're not promising anything to anybody we're just learning how these things can work and then the step to actually form a union uh, district would come later so if a union do you mind my asking sure question now? so if a union because if a union district is formed that has no m more power than what it is now, or does it? Uh, see, the, uh, it, it does. It creates a legal entity. It is a legal entity, yeah. and it would be a legal entity the which would circumscribe the, the broadband geography of that particular district. I think there's a lot of learning that has to be done yeah. because there's so many different kinds of inter uh, connectivity available and so forth. So I think that... Um, uh, the the point of these union districts is to be able to be is to begin to negotiate that whole process and make it available to their their communities in whichever ways they see fit, as I understand mm -hmm. it, um, and. Uh, I, 
apparently, uh, from the state's point of view, or from this, this, uh, anytime any two towns form any two towns can form a union in the district. They don't have to be contiguous, and the two those two towns can then invite any other towns that they want to join the uh, union district. So it's not they're not they're not circum they're not set. Uh, there's a there's a fair amount of flexibility. <laughs> fair amount of flexibility uh, once you get engaged in these. So, um, uh, the, uh, my, uh, there was a question that came whether or not our, uh, you know, we individually in the room, would people be willing to continue investigating and learning? And both Michael and I stood up. Right. I don't, it wasn't a commitment on behalf of the select board mm -hmm. or anything like that, but it could have been, I think, a, a, a commitment if, if the select board was interested because, it seems like um, a, a clear next step because the, the, uh, there's so little of capacity of individual towns in Vermont right. to actually handle these problems that banding together is the way to do it. And the state's now coming up with ways to facilitate this process, this banding together, and make it uh, workable. Fantastic. Yeah, my vision listening to him talk, I don't know what you thought, but my vision listening to him talk was that in some years, the entire state will become one of these union mm -hmm. uh, communications union districts that will then be able to have some sort of negotiating power for being able to get appropriate broadband uh, around the state in all of its different places. But, uh, it, A it, consummation to be devoutly wished. <laughs> yeah. And what I understand of the CUDs or whatever they're called is it's, it's a means by which to create the finances behind bringing the internet or bringing the broadband to your town. Meaning you can't do it alone, you can't finance it with town funds. Going through a, the CUDs that they're creating, they're, they've all got broadband. Every single one of the three CUDs has significant broadband that they've offered to the towns and this is a way to finance it so that the towns can have it, have that access. I mean, my biggest issue around this discussion is what is the capability of the broadband they're talking about in these cuts, you know, or the, the towns. It, it, to me, it comes back to, you know, fiber is fiber, everything else is like yesterday. And right. Yep. How, does, how does a town or how does a group of towns come together to create a very high level communication cut? Uh, at least that's that's I I've, yeah, I've had a little access to some of this in the past, and and that was my we have take. A question I was from the, uh, let from Sheila the, talk. Uh, She's been even more. I'll try to. I wasn't at this meeting, unfortunately. I couldn't be there, but a C communications union district is the vehicle, the the group which will then create a business plan and mm -hmm. look for investors. So the business plan. Hopefully it won't be modeled on an antique, you know, or, or soon to be outmoded um, form of uh, internet um, communications. It would be based on fiber optics. Um, and, and then hopefully the business plan would be such that it would attract investors um, who would then help facilitate this whole thing. So in, in re that regard, would the, would, so that the, there's these towns, they become a cut, they create a business plan. The business plan is to bring broadband to all of those towns in that kind. Fiber. Fiber. Fiber, Fiber optic in, in, into, into those towns. So once the cut is established, those are the towns that... If that can be, it can be, a, it can be, it can be adjusted. Pot yeah. Yeah, yeah, potentially. It's the starting point where the funds can start to be released or the investor. That's a better way to put yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're going to be looking for investors, people to, who want to... Makes and they, uh, the other thing is, it's, uh, I mean, uh, the other examples, the models that exist are growing now, and they're not growing by town. It's not as if a town has to commit. It's almost like they're growing sort of road by road or, or subscribers, uh, subscribers by subscriber, yeah. and, and then they begin to become uh, grouped force. together by towns. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Did uh, they talk about the, um, what, the, what the state's looking at in terms of funds available? Yeah. There, there was mention of numerous grants um, yeah. rural digital opportunity fund was one yeah there was several. USDA yeah something called e-rate sponsored by the Department of Commerce mm -hmm. so there were like actual did they talk any in, in any of those did they describe the amounts 
potentially uh, just, would be just possible. The, in, what the whole I was I gotcha. and not, you know, how much it's would come to Vermont. It's not that no, much throughout it's, Vermont. Yeah, it's, it's like, I think it's a, it's a well, really the, minimal amount. That's right the right problem. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I mean, it's, it might be enough to help hire a consultant to create exactly. a business. Right. That's what the yeah. state is right now, is That's, building these okay. teams to build yeah. it. And, and the, apparently the, the E, what's it called, E, EC fiber, the, yep. the in yeah. the middle of the state, fiber. they actually have, uh, they've gotten a grant, whereas now they can act as a consultant. They're able to go out and they're looking for con the consultant uh, partners right now. So gotcha. they would be able to, we would be able to hire them. So Marlboro is getting ready to do that actually pretty soon. Wow. So uh, there, there are other communities that are a little bit further along, maybe, I don't know, I don't mean to step on your toes no, here, no. but there are other communities that seem ready to act. And I don't know whether they're, um, that was the impression I got just talking to people after the meeting. Was there some discussion of uh, needing to create a, like a ballot initiative or like town approval to enter into one There of is, uh, the, if, we're, if we were one of the first two towns, if we were to band together, then there it needn't be, I think if I'm wrong. Who's we? Uh, the two towns, the select boards would agree to form a, this exploratory cut and then there wouldn't need to be a ballot. Uh, but any, after that, anybody that needs to join into another one, it has to become an approved situation by the, by by the, the community. So but, a but no funds can follow that. No, mm -hmm. can't be taxed or anything. The, I, it, WRC, I think, is sponsoring a, a follow-up meeting to encourage anyone who sort of stood up to say they're interested in being more involved to uh, yeah to Great. attend and so. Yeah. I think. Well, I mean, I'd be willing to go. To Great, that. and you yeah, yes, absolutely. Said, Thank you so much. That's very. Um, it's awesome. Great representation. And, uh, uh, and just so you know, I'll be I'll be re reporting to um, his name is Steve John in Marlboro, oh, uh, right. and he he asked for a report of our discussion tonight. So I'll just tell him that we talked about it, and then we're generally we're on open top to the idea. Yeah. <laughs> hey, when you say Marlboro's going forward with it, what what are they going forward with? Creating a cud? Uh, I think that, that they they've already begun to do a lot more exploration. So I, I don't know that they're to that point yet, okay. but they're. Um, I don't think they're interested in finding out if we want to do that just yet, but I will learn more. Yeah. Well, wouldn't it be wonderful if this could be a project like the Rural Electrification well, that's Project? A, you it's, know. It is one like that. Well, it's not really. Well, I mean, that one got it. It should be. That one got Yeah, that had federal funding. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I just wanted to go on the record. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a good, wouldn't very good Wouldn't it point. be wonderful to have that the future, you know, acknowledged and coming here in that particular way instead of all of us scrambling to waste our time doing it in this well, way. Well, that's what one of the points Sheila just made it too, is that we're, we're talking about building it and getting involved in technology that's going to be over as soon as we yes, get there. Exactly. <laughs> so how do you get to the there point where you are? There won't be any wires at all. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> No. Tell me in it, our <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments about that? Thank you very well, much. That was care. That's great, guys. That was an articulate update. And, that, uh, uh, I'm speaking. Uh, <laughs> and I, I want to thank you on behalf of us all for doing that. Yes? Mr. Chair, do you mind if I ask a question? Not at all. This is BCTV cameraman Ian Keel, not a Guilford resident. Is it possible that uh, a select board member is on? Uh, you wrote that up as a summary? Yes. Is that something that might go on the Guilford website? Because he's apparently written a summary, and that would be something that any of us could could look at. Um, it seems like uh, the, the, maybe the link to the um, rather than my summary, which was just my words, but the yeah. the, the, the possibility to see the entire meeting oh, and notes are available. Yeah, that's like, an that idea. would be the, that would the be link good. to that. Okay. Maybe yeah, that's all I ask. I just yeah. know yeah. that you guys are really good about Thank putting up stuff on your website. Thank you for that suggestion. So I'm putting an action point that I will add the link to the video on the website. Terrific. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Making progress here. Mr. Rude, Municipal Budget Workshop. Update. Yes. So I attended the VLCT 2019 Budgeting Workshop, which I last attended two years ago with our intrepid vice chair here, um, when she was a new select person. It, this is a workshop that VLCT recommends uh, town staff um, attend every two years just due to changes in laws and uh, updating of practices. I went this year, uh, it was, I was, yeah, 
it wasn't too exciting this year. Um, most of the sessions were uh, put on by folks who have been there previously and um, mostly repeated their same uh, presentation that they did with a few edits for uh, notable changes. There were only a few minor changes this year and thankfully they don't impact Guilford at all and the reason being is we're already doing them. Um, mm -hmm. The most notable of the updates of interest was that the state is now uh, regarding conflict of interest policies for uh, select board members and, and town staff that it, previously the state had it written in such a way that it was highly recommended but it was still an optional item for select board members particularly for select board members it is now a requirement that all towns in the state have a conflict of interest policy mm -hmm. uh, for select board members but that's something we've been doing we've for, been doing for, for years. years and years so it, it has no bearing on us but some towns think this is a, a big deal that you know we're moving away from the old-fashioned Vermont and we don't trust people anymore and you know all that business and it's where we are at today so it's not really new. Uh, the most interesting session that they had for the day was uh, put on by the director of property valuation and review the primary reason why it was of interest is because the state is spending a large sum of money and is updating the grant list software. And with that, they're moving, uh, most likely moving away from NIMRIC because uh, NIMRIC does not offer the uh, tools or technology that modern listers uh, and assessors need to do their jobs accurately. And it doesn't appear that they are willing to update uh, for this presentation. And so, uh, NEMRIC has put in a bid for the RFP, but so have numerous other companies, and mm. they are current, they being the state, are currently narrowing down their choices um, and reviewing uh, what they have to offer. Uh, one of the, the, the presentation this woman did was excellent, and uh, people attending the workshop had some really difficult questions for her, and she did a very admirable job in responding to them. And one of the their big areas of concern is that whomever the final software provider that they choose happens to be, that they offer an entire suite of software services similar to what NEMRIC does for towns, that should a town wish to switch their software over, that they would have the ability to do so, and that is something that they are working with. So, um, which kind of brings me to a, a bigger question to think about, and this is a conversation I have had um, at various stages with all my colleagues is um, our server is slowly starting to have more and more problems. The software we have uh, on our server is coming to end of life um, at the end of this year and upgrading it. We're going to have to either upgrade it, and I've brought this up to the select board in the past uh, six months or so. Um, it's not to the point where it needs to be replaced yet, but something we should be thinking we about. need to think about it and the upgrading to new Microsoft uh, server software is an option but it unfortunately they're trying to push clients into the cloud and their server software for on-site servers doesn't quite offer as many um, options as their older stuff did ironically um, so one option would be for Guilford to consider that whoever it is that the state chooses for the uh, grand list software, that we potentially consider joining in the state contract for the entire software suite. Mm -hmm. Now we would negotiate a separate deal from the state, but we would get the state discount mm -hmm. in that. And, oh. and actually the workshop that followed this was one on state procurement contracts and how <laughs> towns can join in. And that was probably the second most valuable time uh, it, although it was very interesting and could potentially be beneficial to the town, it was very overwhelming because at any given point in time, the state has over a thousand contracts in place. Wow. Um, not all those are open to towns to join in on, but well over half of them are. That's a lot. Um, when, so do, when do you think the server will be really kaput? I'm, it, well, <laughs> just, I've been talking with this, with, <laughs> I was say, don't use that word. With, with Penny, uh, for the probably the past year 
Um, we're honestly we're hoping we could get another year out of it is our hope um, I don't know we'll have to plan that. we'll have yeah, to look at our so we should be thinking about it now right, right. No, no, that's no, my I, point yeah. so um, right. as far as the states choosing new software they will be choosing it this spring and they will be slowly implementing it the software that they choose they're making sure that it will be compatible in some form or another with uh, Nemric, so towns who choose not to switch can still oh, that's good. do what they need to do. Um, so yeah, we, we have a number of questions to consider, and then it will be fully implemented by January of 2021, so all towns will have at, at least be required to switch over their grant list software to the new product by January of 21. Did they say what the burden to the town that such a switch is going to be? They do not know at this time. It's gonna have to, it's gonna be huge. It's something else mm -hmm. we're gonna have to plan for. It will be. Yeah. You mean the monetary um, Yeah. The, the other thing is after we just did, we updated all our listing software. Well, not not the grand list software, which is a part of the network package. Um, that was the that was Proval, uh, which does all our lister cards and all of that. Okay. We did not we didn't just two years ago? Okay. Um, the other thing that you know, the Good. woman from the state made the point of is that this is a huge deal and they're taking it extremely seriously because they don't expect they're going to be able to do something like this for probably another 25 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, it's going to be a multi-million dollar project that's going to take a year and a half to implement. It's going to be much later than, take much longer than they think, I'm sure. Um, so, I mean, they're already ahead of schedule in their timeline that they they started this project in, I think she's, I don't quote me 100%, but I think in late 2017. So this has been ongoing for a while. Um, and is that Joe? Uh, oh, sorry. And there will likely be many towns that would want at least accurate information about being part of those contracts, those changes. And so that will yep, be right. another sort of layer of communication that will either work or be complicated. Yep. Any questions or comments on that update? Thank you. Thank it's you Peter. It gives us a great deal to think about. Yeah, we do need to think. I, I don't think we to need prepare to prepare for. I don't think we need to take any immediate action. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. Based on what she said, I don't foresee that it will impact our. Uh, next fiscal year's budget. I think okay. it will, year after that, I think it will, but I don't think in our planning, it's obviously considerate, like Gordon said, as well as consider what to do about the server uh, in the meantime. Okay, well, let's stay on top of it, please. Yeah, yes. And the next, the local hazard mitigation plan training, what yes. you were going to tell us about. I, I did, and as I uh, told you uh, a couple of weeks ago, this is the um, training that I learned about at the Emergency Man Management Conference was up in Waterbury at the Vermont Emergency Management Center and, and was put on, uh, was primarily led by two individuals from uh, FEMA and then a, a couple, supported by a couple of people from VEM. And I was very surprised and very impressed. It was really excellent training. Um, there, of the 22 participants, only two of us were from towns. Um, all the rest wow. of the participants were either f uh, state employees that needed to get trained in this process or were um, from regional planning commissions um, because they, unfortunately, are the ones that a lot of this work falls on to. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with the entire uh, nine hours of training that we had. Yeah, thank this. you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I do, Richard, really appreciate it. But I, I did actually, I was really surprised. It was, it was very interesting, very well done. Uh, it just goes through the process of either writing or rewriting the hazard mitigation plan, and the which yeah. Sheila had actually brought up to me a, a month ago. I was going to say a month ago. Three to four weeks ago, yeah. Yeah, that I need to be thinking about and planning for because ours expires in the beginning of September of 2020. That's a very There's, important date for us. Yes. In fact, it's September 3rd of 2020, if you want to be specific. Oh, okay. The folks from FEMA recommend a one-year uh, process to go through 
uh, this either for a new plan or for a major rewrite. And we do have models. That's the we have the model of our own plan, and we have the model of other we do. plans. Um, and also, we have the Wind and Regional Commission, which is yeah, very willing to. There's help a us. few things that slightly complicate that in that we can't exactly use a neighboring town because. Every town is different, both in, as far as sure. the, the geography, the infrastructure, and what is of most concern to <coughs> the select board, the uh, you know, highway commissioner, the planning commission, and residents. So yes, we can use it, for example, uh, Vernon's was just uh, put out for oh, review, yes. was extremely yeah, well done. Um, anyhow. But we can't completely use Vernon's. No. No. <laughs> I, I, I just no, think that want. it's if we're lucky. I mean, it's a good thing yes. that we have models. That there are models. And there yeah, are pieces there are models, we can pull. And there are pieces and we can pull. Obviously. This process is going to be slightly changing coming January 1st, hopefully for the better. That's what they're proclaiming, is that it will help. I think there's some skepticism, particularly on the part of the RPCs. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, so through this process, generally, generally the, the planning commission in a town is the one that's heavily involved in this process, um, as is the EMD, the select board, the highway commissioner, and um, local emergency services are generally the ones that are, are most heavily involved in this. I have spoken um, to a couple of our planning commissioners, particularly the chair and vice chair at the moment, about the fact that this is going to be coming due and we need to do the work knowing full well that they are in the middle of rewriting the town plan that is due in June, which is an enormous amount of work. Plus, they're working on the Guilford Handbook, and they're dealing with a couple other, quote-unquote, smaller subjects. Um, I did uh, ask Peter to create a calendar of 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 the process. Yes. So that we'll, and have you done that? Or? Uh, well, I'm actually going to get to that in a moment. Um, and so they made very clear that they feel that the hazard mitigation plan is very important. However, they do not have any capacity whatsoever to tackle this project. Um, so that's part of why I went to this training, is I suspected that I would need to take a bigger role in this. Um, and so with that, I also uh, reached out, I also reached out to our acting EMD and Included her in the conversation, and then reached out to Wyndham Regional Commission to kind of talk with them, uh, with Alyssa Savetto about this work. She's. And do, um, excuse me. Yep. Do you need more support on this? I mean, do you need the select board to take a more, or, or individuals from the select board to take a more active role? Uh, potentially, yes. Uh, it would be helpful. Uh, definitely. Uh, well, I will volunteer to well, thank be you. as helpful. I mean, the select board it will be involved with the entire process. No, I'm better on Actively involved with writing it would be very helpful, yes. And, or rewriting it, I should say. You know, speaking with Alyssa, she's very busy right now because of other things that have happened at WRC. Unfortunately, she doesn't have just a couple to rewrite every in this particular year. Because of previous events, she has 14 to do in the upcoming year. Um, so she's, and she's doing three to four at one time, and they take anywhere from three to six months for her to do her process. So she's feeling overworked and overburdened with this process at the moment. And um, for example, she's working on four right now that are due by December, and they're not going to be done because it's so, one person. It, so there are no possibilities of getting an extension. No. Um, they expire. Well, you do not get extensions. So did, she, did Alyssa say that you couldn't help Guilford? Is that what you're getting at? Or? Pretty much. And she uh, said that in the next six months, she could probably offer five to eight hours mm -hmm. to assist us, but she does not have the capacity to help us write it. And that being said, she made it very clear that she feels that um, Guilford and Guilford staff are more than capable to do this work. And she said it would be... A, huge burden lifted if we could take this on and that she could work as a consultant. Um, and so as part of your request for setting up a timeline for this, as well as for what exactly needs to be done, I've actually set up a meeting next week with Alyssa, which we confirmed this afternoon, to help me do that. To help you do the timeline. Correct. Good. As well as 
Tell me to a good tutor that. about that. Yes. Um, so she was very happy to do that. Um, she's very excited to hear that Guilford's working on it a year ahead of time instead of sending them a letter saying ours is expiring in two months. Can you help us? Um, a couple other final details um, is that she feels because ours is a rewrite that we don't have to do all of the major community events that a uh, new plan has to do. So she's estimating one, maybe two public meetings um, involving the select board and some planning commissioners on this. Um, so it shouldn't be that big a deal. One last thing to let you guys know, there is technically a hazard mitigation plan planning grant that um, is available. It's a statewide grant. It's not going to be available. Uh, don't get too excited yet, Michael. Um, it, it's not going to be open. The newest round won't be open until the, after the new year. The downside to that is, from what I learned, is these grants are primarily aimed at towns who demonstrate financial and human resource needs. Basically, they don't have town staff that. Can work so, what would the I mean, the grant funds are for basically it's getting a writer or a consultant. That is exactly it. It's ten thousand dollars maximum to hire a consultant. Ninety-nine point nine percent of the times, those consultants are your RPC. Um, and Which is not available in this case. And, and, <laughs> and because of A, because of our financial situation, and B, because we have an office full of staff that can work on this, as well as a very engaged planning commission, Guilford is likely going to fall very low on the eligibility list for this grant. And Alyssa said, in our case, it probably wouldn't even be worth our time going through the application process because only three to four towns per county will get chosen for these grants. Okay, thanks, Peter. Uh, um, we have a lot to think about there. Are there questions or discussion points? I guess my only question, discussion point, is I really feel that Wyndham Regional, I know Alyssa is uh, you know, busy, but I'm not feeling like Guilford's getting much support in the being proactive, you know, engaged in this process a year ahead of time. You know, instead of going to them three months ahead and said, we've got to get this done, guys. Well, you she know? was the one that offered to meet with me within the next two weeks. Which is great to create a timeline. But, but no, and also to... Okay, great. So her task to me was to read our plan. Okay. To, in particular, speak with uh, Danny and a couple of the planning commissioners to see what their input on the Good. current status of it okay. are. For me to write down my questions and and to write down recommendations based off of what I learned from the training, to come to her and say, okay, this is what I'm thinking about, and then she will direct me from there what the next steps of what okay. I need to do would be. Right, so um, we have guidance. And, and so she said, if basically she said if I could, with the assistance of others in town, could put together 80 percent of the plan, she, she said could help she could help with the remaining 20 percent. Right. Uh, are there any other volunteers to help? I know Veranda is one. I, I, I'll, do, uh, I'll help too. Anyone, anyone else want to? My, I'd be interested. Okay, sure. so there's three. Yeah. We have three yeah, volunteers. She's and, oh, Miss Morris, thank you so much. Is the current thank plan you, she on the town website? We couldn't do it without it's you. Well, I mean, I've already done it. So oh, yes. you've got to ask about that. I did the Vernon plan, so. Good. Oh, yeah. Oh, but I, I have a question. If, if three select board members mm -hmm. are on a committee does yeah. that mean that we have to be a public warn. meeting yep okay so I'll that's a warning. okay you and michael i'll sip up okay. and you and michael and miss morris are there copies available to i can get it for you. i just found it today actually so it took a bit of digging would someone like? Would you like to be the coordinator of that committee as a public volunteer? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I'm going to be going in a couple of weeks away, so oh. I'll I'll do mostly by email. Okay. Could someone? I need a coordinator though. Someone to actually bring the committee together and. I will do that. Okay. There you go. Thanks very much, Peter. That was splendid. Uh, let's talk about the select board meeting date adjustments. One moment, please. So Michael, Veranda, Sheila, and Sheila, and Peter himself on the committee. Okay. All right. So 
as you folks know, every fall we have to make a few adjustments. There's actually fewer this year to some select board meetings that fall on public holidays. And the select board needs to make a motion if you so wish to make those adjust adjustments. Um, this year we have two. The first is Indigenous Peoples Day, which is a holiday observed uh, by Guilford um, on the 14th of October. Um, no this, this most of the rest of the country is Columbus Day. This 14th of October. That is correct. Uh -huh. um, per town policy, it should then default to the immediately following Wednesday at 6.30. That's the way we've always done it. Mm -hmm. So, it, so it's, it, I mean, it's written, actually, it can be changed by the yeah, select board. You can change it, but that's what the, the policy is written as right now per the personal policy. So that's the first one I'm recommending you change. The second one is to, to from the 14th from to 16th. To 16th. Should we? Okay. Do we want to do individually? Do these each uh, I think you can do them all yeah, at let's once. Let's do it all at right. once. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, the second one is uh, the 11th of November, which is Veterans Day. It is not technically a holiday observed by the town. Um, it is up to you whether or not you want to observe or move the select board meeting. It, I know that it's been done a couple times in the past, and yeah. often it isn't, but it's up to your I'd decision. I'd like to keep it that day. I would too. Yeah. Oh, On really? the 11th? Okay. Yeah. It's already scheduled. For, it is already scheduled yeah. for the 11th, so you need I don't to see any need to if change. If you don't want to change it, you need to please. Uh, you need not take any action right. if you wish to keep that date. Let's keep if that. The date. select board feels strongly about yeah. that. That's fine. So let's um, put that into the motion of keeping that day. Do you want? So I make have a motion. An objection to that? No, no, no. Okay. No, that's fine. Um, is there another de time? Alternate? I mean, I mean. No, I really mean, mean no, the, in terms the, of the the the. No, it depends on basically it depends on. The other one is a little bit funny because it all depends on your schedules for the December holidays mm -hmm. uh, because technically there's no reason to move it at the moment, but for those of you who are going to be with family or friends, um, the, it's the 9th and the 23rd as it is now. Yeah, so the 23rd is, so if folks are going to be traveling to be with family, I mean, I, the 23rd is Hanukkah, if that's a oh. impact anybody. <laughs> so there's, there's... It is Hanukkah. Yeah. It is Hanukkah. Oh, so there tech, there's a holiday right there. So... It doesn't affect me. Um, we can have latkes at our meeting. Yes. Light the candles. I'm all for it. So, so it, should we keep the 23rd? I mean, so it, it at is this the day point, I'm, Christmas I'm, Eve, I'm okay. I, it what, I mean, another what would you do? Move it a week later? Or something no, like it, we would usually move it to the 25th, well, I mean, which is Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's going to work. That's, that's not going to be obvious because that's another holiday. So, but then we skip a week, don't we? Um, so technically, you could then. So we could do it the seventh, sixth, I guess. January have 6th? a back to back on the thirteenth. I think we ought to just keep it. Let's keep it. If people keep it. But what about the thirtieth of December? Yeah. Yes. That's so, I mean, he just. I mean, I'm just. No, that I'm could just be. Trying you could, to understand. You could no. move it to yeah. the next. I'm sorry. New Year's I, Eve. I kick my yeah. calendar forward. I think forward. I might like it on the 30th as opposed to the 23rd. But I, I'm, I'm easy. Does anybody have any? I'm not sure whether I'm going to be in. Not time sure yet. at this I'm point. Either yeah. of those I'm dates. Sure. So my my personal recommendation is to keep it okay. the 23rd for now. Still change it. So I need a motion then. I'll make a motion to move the October 14th meeting from the 14th to the 16th. Yeah. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, the motion is carried. Thank and you. I suppose that later, if people have a firmer idea for where they'll be on the 23rd, i.e. not here, then we have the option to move it. Exactly. Right. Or you also have the option to cancel it. Right. That's true. Well, or people could Skype in. Yeah. That's true. Uh, did you take a vote on that? Uh, anyway. All those in favor? I, I did. Uh, yes. Yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait, uh, it was passed right. unanimously, yes. did it? <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> you been. <laughs> um, I was okay. working. <laughs> okay. All right. Now we have uh, warrants. Who is Gordon, please? I will make a motion to pay the following warrants. Uh, payroll week ending 9-15-19. For six thousand nine hundred and eighty-seven dollars and twenty-two cents, 
payroll week ending 9-22-19 for $6,530.61 and expense warrant number 2006 for $96,124.29 for a grand total of $109,642.12. Second do that before I continue. Should, should do, I continue? Do you want to discuss? Uh, well, we have to oh, second. Is, that, is there a second? Sure. So, so out of expense warrant, because it's quite large, two zero zero six of ninety six thousand dollars, seventy two thousand dollars is the planned expense for the truck that's been planned. And again, I just want to note there: one, it was planned. Two, Dan reduced the amount of the but we. This is coming under budget. Mm -hmm. uh, right. By 50 percent. Yeah, we had budgeted much more than that. Exactly, yeah. we had budgeted more. So again, I think it, it plays to this whole keeping a close eye on expenses as we talked about before, Dan, and uh, I just think all our town officials spend a lot of time and energy trying to save the town as much money as they can. Right. And, and if I can add, as a reminder, the funds for the truck purchase are coming from the Highway Reserve Fund. They sure. are not coming that's from the too. operating. Yeah, that's true, too. Yeah. Thank you, Peter, for that. Yeah. So, that, you know, it's that's only what, 24000 yeah. is actually coming out of the operating budget. Uh, and the capital budget. The, the truck is not coming the out truck, of the truck. The truck's coming out of the Reserve Fund. The, reserve fund. the, the Highway, highway reserve Department. Fund. Yeah. And the, the only other thing, uh, there are two other expenses that were more sizable. One was the work we're going to do on our well here to clarify our problems with our water. Clarify then, the water. Yes. <laughs> How you like that? <laughs> and the purchase of more culverts. I think Dan has purchased all the culverts he's hopefully going to need for the year. Thank you, Gordon. Do I have a, uh, uh, would all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. All right, now we're on communications. I have a brief communication, and Veranda informed me that she has a brief communication. Um, we have a, communi a, a thank you card from Guilford Cares to the select board members, so they wanted to receive your generous gift uh, in honor of Sheila Morse's work for the town. They will miss her greatly. Oh, well, that's very nice. Well, isn't that nice? So. so that was one of the selected charities that she wished the to go to. Thank you. And Veranda had one. Yes, I wanted to acknowledge the death of Mert Garland this week. Mert Garland was 84 years old, and I mean, in Guilford, he did practically everything. He was a select board member. He was a planning board member. He was on the volunteer fire department, a <coughs> deacon of the church, an elk, you name it, <laughs> and a great outdoorsman, uh, a wonderful husband, father, grandfather, and great-grandfather, and a person who could fix anything, who was a great outdoorsman, and was a friend in his own curmudgeon -y way to people whether they were old timers or n new timers and I had well I wouldn't call it the pleasure but the solace of attending his funeral and uh, Guilford Old and New was there and only the members of his immediate people really chose to speak and they were all so eloquent and down to earth and it just made me feel really proud of the the old anchors mm -hmm. of this town and how honored I am to sort of serve in their place. Well thank you for that memory. Uh, do I have a motion for adjournment? I will make a motion to do adjourn. I have a second? I will second. Any discussion? No. <laughs> oh, what's in favor? I love Aye. your enthusiasm. Aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night to our studio audience. <laughs> <laughs>